Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I just want to show you um, some top tips using a infrared heat gun. These can be purchased just from an auto store or online. They're relatively inexpensive and I'll show you today how we can use it to solve and diagnose some common car problems. Word of warning with these devices, do not look into them when you are taking the temperature. You don't particularly want to take the temperature of your eye. Hang around at the end of the clip and uh, I'll show you what it actually looks like. Let's start with looking at a way to diagnose cylinder misfires or potentially coils or spark plugs that are breaking down. An engine is essentially a heat pump. So let's look at the temperatures of the heat coming out of the engine. You can see here that the, I'm aiming the infrared heat gun at the headers of the exhaust. This engine is quite easy to actually see them and get access to them. They're not all as easy as this. The engine hasn't been running at all and every single one of them sitting at 25 degrees. I've replicated here a cylinder misfire just by disconnecting the coil and this particular cylinder is not going to be firing at all. Okay, let's start it up and watch what happens. Once the engine's running, we're going to want to aim the infrared heat gun at the headers and we're looking for the disparity in the temperatures. The temperatures are going to rise quite quickly as the engine's running. You can see already here it's up to close on 60 degrees. Our non-firing cylinder there was still back at 30. Next one's well over the 100 already. Obviously there is going to be some heat soak into the cylinder that's not firing, but the disparity between it and the other ones is going to be quite high. We can see after only a few seconds of running that some of these header temperatures are well into the 100, 130 degrees, but the one that's not firing is still going to be relatively low compared to the rest of them. You can see here we're sitting it on, it's only on about 40 degrees. Clearly that cylinder is not firing. And now that you've isolated the cylinder that's not firing, you can begin the rest of your diagnosis to figure out what's going on. I also plugged the coil back in and restarted the engine. I just monitored the way that the temperature rose. It very quickly, within a few seconds, matched the temperature of the headers around it and just ensured that the cylinders were firing, firing correctly. Any damage, worn or seized brake components are going to show up in the way that they produce heat. We all know the brakes rely on friction to slow us down and that friction produces a lot of heat. To get some heat into the discs, I went out into the countryside for a drive. I found a downhill section and started to perform some sudden braking manoeuvres. This ensured that the discs were getting really quite hot and any problems that we may have had with the braking systems would have begun to show up. The brakes on this particular car were pretty good, so all I'm going to see on this one is a whole lot of normal. But the more normal you see, the easier it is to diagnose problems later on. After pulling up, what you're wanting to do here is to take the temperature of the disc. Now I tried to take the temperature in the same spot on each of the discs around the car. This one was around about the 146 degree mark. I didn't want to allow a lot of time for the discs to cool down, so this needs to be completed fairly quickly. The disc on this side was around about the 149 degree mark. I'm pretty happy with that. A couple of de degrees difference is not a problem at all. Looking at the back brakes, found that this one was around about 93 degrees. That was significantly different to the front. Walking around, looking at the other side, I'm hoping to get around about that same 90 degree mark as well. It'd be good that the front brakes and the rear brakes are matched. This one was around about 99. I'm still pretty happy with that. If you find you have a major temperature difference between the two on the front and the two on the back, it means you're going to need to look further into the problem. Let's now consider overheating and how our infrared thermometer can help us out with this. We all know that coolant passes through the radiator in order to lower its temperature. It generally goes into the top half of the radiator and it comes out cooler at the bottom half of the radiator. Our infrared thermometer can measure this difference. To do this, we're going to need the engine running and we're looking for the top radiator hose and the lower radiator hose. I'm going to take the temperatures of these and I want to look at the difference between the two. The top one on this case was around about 85 degrees. That's the coolant exiting the engine. The lower one on this case was around about the 70 degree mark. That's the coolant after it's gone through the radiator and been cooled down. Clearly here we can see that the water pump and that the radiator are doing their job. Another example of the radiator performing as it should. Top hose here 
lower hose just underneath it. This is just on my 1.6 Volkswagen Golf. The top hose was running at around 74 degrees. The lower hose was 60 degrees. That 15 degrees difference was taken up through the radiator. Here we can be confident that the water pump and that the radiator are working correctly. And as promised, let's have a look at what happens when you look directly into the infrared beam. I love the circular pattern that it produces. That's awesome. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit that like button below. Make sure you also leave any comments or any questions for me below as well. And don't forget to subscribe.